Have you ever wondered what it is an emergency room nurse actually does? Well, today I'm here to tell you all about their many, many roles and exactly what their job entails. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sandra and I'm a nurse practitioner. I have about 12 years of experience working in emergency rooms. I started as a registered nurse and then continued on in the emergency as a nurse practitioner. I've worked in about a dozen different ERs and I've seen a lot of different setups, but basically the nurses have the same roles in every emergency room. Even though the setups are a little different, the general roles and responsibilities of the nurse in the emergency room are the same. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today in this video. If you're a nurse looking to change specialties and the ER is an area you're considering, or if you're a student nurse trying to decide on what specialty to even get into, or if you're just someone who's interested in what an ER nurse actually does, then this video is for you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please go ahead and do so and hit the notification bell so you get all my new videos. I talk about everything related to being a nurse and a nurse practitioner, among other topics related to health and wellness. I would love to have you here as part of my YouTube family. All right, so we're gonna start with the most obvious role of the ER nurse, and that is the code trauma nurse. This is what a lot of people think the ER is every day, including myself before I was a nurse. I thought it was mostly traumas and the life or death situations. That's often how TV shows portray the ERs. And so a lot of people just have that impression that that's how an ER is. Well, let me tell you, you may get a few cases during the day of a very critical patient, a couple of traumas, maybe a CPR, but that is just a very small percentage of what an ER nurse does. So the code trauma nurse oversees two to three rooms and they are responsible for keeping all the life-saving supplies stocked and keeping the rooms in order for any emergency that comes through the door. It can be a very high stress role, so you want to be well rested and mentally prepared if you are assigned to the trauma or code room. Okay, then most ERs have another critical section closely related to the code and trauma rooms. This is where they put cardiac patients who might be having an MI or a heart attack or a patient who is having a possible stroke. These are patients that are often unstable or if they are stable, they can become unstable very quickly. So they also need to be put in these critical rooms. So this is often another separate assignment for the nurses to manage this critical room. And this again is usually a two to three bed assignment. If you get a rule out stroke roll in the door, you basically become one-on-one -on -one with this patient. And the ratios vary across the US, but generally if every ER was fully staffed, these are the ratios you would likely see. I started as an ER nurse in Canada where I had up to five patients, but in the critical rooms I had two to three patients. And that's generally how it was throughout all the ERs I've ever worked at. In California, where I was a travel nurse, they enforce the ratios. So these numbers are generally pretty consistent. So then there's often many rooms in the ER that see general patients for abdominal pains, for nausea and vomiting, for just general workups that will need blood draws, IV fluids, possibly some pain medication, those kind of things. And a good percentage of the ER is made up of these types of rooms because you can put basically any general patient in these rooms and you have the supplies you need. You'll usually have an IV cart, you'll have an AMBU bag if you need to suddenly resuscitate a patient. They're just not as fully stocked as the critical rooms or some of the more specialty rooms that I'm gonna get into. Okay, so next, most ERs have a couple of rooms that are considered the psychiatric rooms, and a nurse is assigned to these rooms, usually up to four patients, and in these rooms are patients that come in needing a psychiatric evaluation or a mental health workup. So often patients are brought to the ER expressing suicidal ideation, and these rooms are closely monitored and this is where patients who need to be seen by a psychiatrist or what we call a flight risk, where if they leave, there's a possibility of them harming themselves, whether intentionally or accidentally. So they get placed in these rooms where there is a sitter assigned to oversee them, to make sure they don't leave, to make sure they don't harm themselves, where they're always being watched for their own safety. Once their initial assessment is done, they're often just waiting on a psychiatric evaluation or waiting for an admission bed. So if the psychiatric team clears them, they will be discharged home. If they decide to admit them, they need to be assigned to a psychiatric unit. These are sometimes within the hospital itself, or sometimes these patients need to be transferred to outside psychiatric facilities. Often these patients are in the ER for several hours or several days even. Sometimes a patient will need medications to calm their behavior and sometimes this assignment is very calm and routine for the whole 12 hour shift. So you just never know. 
but often these patients are depressed, sad, withdrawn, and it requires a special nurse to be able to take care of these patients. So another role of the ER nurse is the OB-GYN rooms. So in these rooms, usually there's one to two rooms where they can be securely closed with a curtain or a door. This is where the pelvic exams occur. This is often where pregnant patients are placed that need an obstetric evaluation or patients that are having a miscarriage will be placed in these rooms so that they can have the privacy for those exams. So anyone that needs a very private room for an exam will often be placed in the OB-GYN rooms. And in these rooms, you will usually find all the special supplies you need for these specific exams. So some ERs just see all their pediatric patients in their general rooms, and some have a specific area of the ER just for pediatrics. So often you will be filling the role of a pediatric nurse in the ER. And this is completely different than taking care of adults. Your approach is different, your techniques are different, and pediatric ER nursing is definitely a special area that requires a special nurse. Often you'll find adult ER nurses that don't want to work with the kids at all, and then vice versa, that some of these ER nurses just love seeing the kids. Like me, I absolutely love seeing the kids. When I was a travel nurse, I loved working in a pediatric ER. And that's what made me decide to pursue becoming a family pediatric nurse practitioner. So that's just another role in the ER is pediatrics. And then usually most ERs have a fast track or urgent care section where they see the lesser acuity patients and usually require much less of a workup. So often you will see fractures in these sections. You'll see mild upper respiratory infections, foreign body removals. Most of these kind of complaints will be put in a fast track or urgent care section of the ER and a nurse will be assigned to this area and even though the complaints are much less severity this nurse is working hard because you are turning beds and turning patients a lot faster than the rest of the ER where they do their initial workup and then they're waiting on results to come back whereas in the fast track that doesn't happen you may see a patient for 10 minutes and then they're discharged or they may have a foreign body removed and then they're out the door so the turnover is much faster and this nurse is usually hustling their entire shift. Okay, so then there's the triage nurse. So the triage nurse is close to the emergency entrance and there's usually security close by to prevent any dangerous situations with anyone being able to walk into the ER. So the triage nurse takes their initial complaint. They're usually working with a tech. They'll get a set of vitals. They'll get a very quick story of why the patient is there and they will enter the information and then the triage nurse will assign a triage level to the patient. One is a very unstable patient or requiring to see a doctor immediately, whereas a level five is considered safe to wait to see a doctor or a provider. So the triage nurse needs to be able to apply a correct ESI level is what we call it in the ER. And that is how the charge nurse knows how to assign patients to rooms. So usually triage nurses have to go through some special training and they have to have a bit of experience working in the main ER before they can do the triage because they need to have that ability to know what is severe and what is not. So that leads to the next role, which is the charge nurse. So the charge nurse has a big role. They have to oversee the whole ER. They have to make sure everything is moving smoothly and swiftly, that the patients are getting moved into appropriate rooms, that the staff are being taken care of. They are there to put out any fires. They are just the leader of the ER for that shift and they are there to work through any situations that may come up. They usually make the assignments. They take important phone calls. The charge nurse has a very important role. Okay, so then there's the break float nurse. So the float nurse in the ER is usually there to take care of everyone's breaks. And when someone doesn't need a break, they're there to help out the busy assignments. So the float nurse is often very busy because they're just going around helping everyone. They don't do their workups and then they have a little bit of downtime to catch up on charting. The float nurse is busy. There's usually always someone that needs a break. So this can be a very busy assignment. But as a float nurse, you need to be able to perform pretty much any job in the ER. And then oftentimes a nurse is assigned to admissions that are being held in the ER when there's no room to move them upstairs to a bed. So if the entire hospital is full and there are several admissions in the ER, sometimes they will be able to pull a nurse from the floor to oversee these admissions, but often there's not a nurse available to pull from the floor. So an ER nurse has to jump into this role. So they essentially become a floor nurse where they're doing med passes. They're pretty much rounding on these patients as they would as if they were on the floor. It's much more routine than the regular ER nurse role. Any ICU admissions will usually stay in the critical rooms until they can be moved up to the ICU and the nurse that is assigned to those critical rooms will take care of those ICU patients until they are able to be moved up to the unit. So ERs are like many hospitals as you can see there are many many roles for the ER nurse 
and they are often called the jack of all trades because they need to know a little bit about everything in medicine. We see all patients. We never know what's going to walk in the door. We don't know if it's going to be a slow day or a busy day. No two days in the ER are ever alike. All right, you guys, so I hope this helped you understand the many roles of the ER nurse. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Please give this a thumbs up if you like this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you get all my new videos. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.